Okay, so today we're going to be multiplying decimals by decimals. So we're also going to look at models. And um, these models are similar to your fraction multiplication models because we moved colors over to represent different numbers. So um, what you have to do is to multiply decimals less than 1, you've got 5 tenths by 8 tenths. So either one can go either way, but let's do five tenths first. One, two, three, four, five. And if you were doing this on your paper, you'd shade one direction and then show eight tenths with the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight tenths this way and five tenths this way. Well, this is extra and this is extra. We want to count how much is double shaded? So it would be this amount. And so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 times 5, which is 40. So 40 hundredths is shaded. So what does that look like? That looks like 40 hundredths. So um, if, if you um, multiplied 8 times 5, that would be 40. That's where that 40 comes from. And 40 hundredths is what's shaded. So let's make sure that that's what shows up. And it does 40 hundredths. Checking it with the spyglass. So now we're going to multiply decimals again less than 1. So what would this look like? It would look like 3 tenths. Um, we could say going, going down or going over. It doesn't matter. So 3 tenths. And then 6 tenths going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so that gives us a total of 6 times 3, which is 18. And so 18 hundredths, because that's what it shows, 18 hundredths. And our spyglass says 18 hundredths, so that is correct. So um, this is still multiplying decimals less than 1. So go ahead and um, in your notes, um, try to sketch this out and see what you would come up with and see what would be double shaded. this way or four coming across this way, four tenths, and then seven tenths coming across this way, and the double shaded is seven times four, which is 28, 28 hundredths, and that's our answer, 28 hundredths. So now we're going to be multiplying decimals greater than one. So if you've got one and four tenths, how would you show that? You would show it a whole one and then four tenths. One, two, three, four. And if you had six tenths, you would show it one, two, three, four, five, six. And the part that's double shaded is what you would count. And um, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. 6 across times 14, so 14 times 6 is 84 hundredths is double shaded, and so let's see if 84 hundredths is what we get. Oh, no, this is, it, it would, um, let's see. 84 hundredths, 84 hundredths. So that, that decimal point would go there. And that shows 84 of them shaded. So decimals, multiplying decimals greater than one. So this time we're gonna show three tenths. And since these are going this way, we're gonna have to um, shade down this way. So that's three tenths, and then we went one and seven tenths. So whole one and then seven more tenths. So we come all the way across. And 
Okay. And so we've got 3 times 17, right? So 3 times 17 is 51. And if we count up all of these hundredths, it would be 51 hundredths. And let's see if that's what our spyglass says. Yes, it does, 51 hundredths. So now we're going to be multiplying decimals greater than one. So two decimals greater than one. And so we need to show one whole. Oops. Whoa, I went way too far. And two tenths. And then one and eight. So all the way across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all that's shaded is this whole one, and then um, it's going to be this part of one, this almost all of one, and this that's left over. So that total that would be unshaded would come to two, one, two, and 16 left over. 16 left over. So to do it without the models, because I mean it's unrealistic that you have models and you're multiplying decimals, and um, that you would have all this de all this decimal grids to do this with. So it says when multiplying a decimal by another decimal, multiply as you do with whole numbers. However, to place a decimal point. Find the sum of the number of decimal points in each factor. The product will have the same number of decimal points. So let me show you. That's a lot of words. Um, let me show you what that is. So the problem. So it doesn't matter. what These are both two digit times two digits. So it doesn't matter what goes on top. That set the problem. Multiply just as I would a two digit times a two digit. So 14, 28, 29, 12. 24, 25, and then add up, just like I normally would. Now, I've got two places here, oh, sorry, one place here, and one place here. So that total is two places. So I need to move that decimal point two places, one, two. So that, that is counting the decimals and then placing the decimal is putting it two places over. So this is one of those real easy things where you're just, they give you the product, but you're finding out how many decimal places are behind each number. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna um, let you watch this for a couple of seconds. Um, write down the answers placing the decimal point in the right place. Okay, so go ahead and check your answers. Make sure that you place your decimal point. A couple to notice is there were five places here and only four numbers. So you have to annex that zero, add that zero, and then put the decimal point. And I know this looks weird, like two times one is three, but that makes sense. There's three decimal places, three decimal places here. So go ahead and practice these um, and, and see if you can multiply just like normal. Count up the decimal places. Move the decimal point, place the decimal point in the answer. Okay, as you can see, this one, just multiply like normal, and you're going to get um, 24, 8, 248 and then two decimal places, two decimal places over. This one, three decimal places, three decimal places over. 
this one four decimal places. So I got 225 and I had to add the zero and move it over. You don't have to do zero, zero, zero. Just add up the total of decimal places and move it over. So Tariq is traveling to Mexico. One US dollar is worth 11 and 3 tenths pesos. How many pesos would he receive for 75.50? So that's a multiplication because this is worth pesos and he, um, how many pesos would he receive for $75? So you gotta do 75.50 times 11.3. And one serving of apple crisp oatmeal has 2.5 grams of fat. How many grams of fat are there in 3.75 servings? That's multiplication. If these were whole numbers, it would be easier to think about. So if you need to, think about that and then multiply them out. So since these are a little bit more complicated, we're going to go over these in class tomorrow. So have your answers, see what you came up with, and see if it matches your teacher tomorrow. And then we're going to discuss... Which is greater? How do you know? How, the, how are the products similar? How are they different? Looking at decimals, decimal points, where do they go? And um, then how are fraction and decimal models similar and how are they different? And we talked a little bit about that, but I want you to really think about that and we'll talk about that in class.